What's going on guys and girls, it's Ghost Robo. Today I got to play Watch Dogs 2 with my friend Volatile Gabe. We were taken to a secret building in downtown LA and played 25 minutes of the brand new Watch Dogs 2 releasing later this fall and boy oh boy it actually is a big improvement over the first game. I was super excited by the trailers and gameplay reveal last week. Now here at E3, got to put the hands on the controller and it's super good. The controller's super good? The game. The game is super good. On the good. controller. Yeah. We played the same mission, which is unfortunate. We played side mission and... Co-op mission. Yeah. We, we tried the co-op, which was, like, really cool. The co-op is a lot improved here. It's not... It's it's, a, it's far less antagonistic and just sort of, like, you, random and you, a lot you more... You can play through the entire game co-op. Right. Well, wait, or is there co-op missions? Because the mission that we did specifically... The way it was told to me was, this is one of our co-op missions. Yeah, what was interesting was that you were able to see the co-op, you were able to see other players in the world, but you had to specifically invite them, and seamlessly they were integrated into your game world. Otherwise, they were just there and could not affect your world, but if you invited them and accepted it, then you could play together. Uh, but before we get to that, Watch Dogs 2 featuring Marcus is set in San Francisco, and they've made a lot of improvements and really found a voice and vibe for the game that wasn't really there in Watch Dogs 1. It seemed to lack its own identity, was just a GTA you know, clone for Ubisoft. And here they doubled down on the hacking, they doubled down on the gadgets, and they really just made this hacker vibe permeate the entire game. Faster. That, that That's the thing that I like about this. It's faster, and like you said, it now it has like an attitude, not a bad attitude, a very nice one. It has style, it has flavor. Yeah, and, and everything, across the presentation, across the characters. Your smartphone is far more integral now. That's how you access your missions, that's how you access your contacts. Uh, it looked like there are a bunch of apps on the phone yes. that we don't know what they do yet. Um, but it is interesting to note some of the the, the, the changes you, you mentioned in the overall gameplay. It's much faster. Yes. Marcus now has parkour, and it's, I think, more flexible and fluid than even in Assassin's Creed. Yeah. He's able to go off walls, he's able to sort of... It felt more modern and organic than the parkour in Assassin's Creed is more like, hey, I'm climbing these ancient structures and doing it methodically. This felt more like, hey, if I had to get away from the cops, this is how I'd move. Yeah. All right, so now that we're talking about gameplay, right, the big thing that they've improved is driving. They really improved the driving. And you, I don't know if it was you or someone else here that said, I don't remember the driving being that bad. I said, yep, the driving was horrible. And the red car that they made, that they told you to drive, right. that that was like specifically the one that wanted us to drive because... It's a sports car. Because those are the cars that were like impossible to control like in the original watch Dogs. They control like crap. They right. like super fixed it and it felt really good. Yeah, and I liked how they pulled back the camera. Marcus is smaller on screen than a typical third-person uh, action or open-world game, but I think it adds a lot of, of gameplay uh, variety because now you can see more of the world and have access to more things to hack. And that was really where they expanded and doubled down this time. So, for example, uh, you saw in the reveal that you can hack cars now, but they also showed us when we got to play how much flexibility and, and options there are within each hack. So, for example, um, I went to hack a, a breaker box, yes. right? Which typically you would just press the button to hack it and it would blow up and either alert someone or take down a guard. Now you have four options on the face button. So you can uh, disable it then, or booby trap it to lure someone right. in. Right. Or you can uh, you can have it make a noise to alert. Yeah. So so there's basically proximity detonation, instant detonation, total disable, and then alert. Yes. So depending on how you want to play, and you can do multiple of those. So you can booby trap it and then alert someone over, and then they'll blow up. So you can yeah. kind of move them to that direction. Um, and the same goes for the car. So you can hack the car and just hack it, quick hack it with L1, mm -hmm. uh, and then it'll kind of just move out of the way. Or you can hold L1, and now you have access to turn it left, turn it right forward, back, and with a little bit of practice, it's not perfect, you know, RC controls, but you are able to sort of drive that car where you need it to go, and some of the interesting features were like, hey, you see a car off in the distance, you're like, I want that car, and the guy's driving away, now you can just hack it and reverse it all yeah. the way back to you and get in without wasting time. Yeah. So, what'd you think of the melee-based weapon, the, the, the pool cue with the rope, because... Pool ball? It, it, yeah, it's, it's, yeah, it's a cue, it's a cue, whatever, it's a cue ball. Gotcha. Yeah. So that thing is so fast and brutal. I don't think you used that as much as I did. I didn't. I specifically like asked, like, hey, I want to use the melee thing because it looked really cool. And they said, yeah, you can do it. Just, you know, quick press a B. And he has multiple animations for it. Like, it's not like one single can animation. So. Right. It, it, and it's fast. And it looks like brutal. It really looks like it hurts. Yeah. But if you want to go stealthy, you know, that's one of the ways to do it. You're not killing anybody by doing this thing. So that's super improved. Uh, the gunplay didn't seem too different, really. No, the gunplay was the one thing I felt was a little bit of a letdown. I was hoping it would feel, you know, more uncharted or a little bit heavier, a little bit more weighted, and it really didn't. 
Um, but again, they didn't even really show us much of the gunplay. Their emphasis yeah. was on what can you do with the, the tool set that is unique to Watch Dogs. And so we got to play and see both drones. He has the quadcopter flying drone. Uh, Call him Drony. Drony, okay. And it's used more for uh, sort of a tactical view. It's used for marking targets. Um, it's used for ascending, descending. You also can hack things yeah. high up. So one of the side missions, we had to sort of shut down a communications tower, and we used Drony to go way up high and shut that down. Um, and it's very instantaneous. You can throw it out instantly, call it back. It didn't seem to be on any sort of charge or yeah. meter. No, but it, if it gets spotted at, and they like they throw rocks at it, enemies like to like bring it down, then it has to recharge. Yeah, and it, it as much as it is a benefit to you. It can be spotted. It reminded me almost of the owl in Far Cry Primal yes, because yes. it could be spotted. It can serve as an advantage or a disadvantage. Um, and then the RC jumper, we that, call Jumpy. <laughs> jumpy, yeah. He is a very high jump. A much better jump than the drone from Rainbow Six Siege. Yeah. This guy's jump is really high. Uh, but what makes him unique is obviously uh, he's ground-based, but he can physically interact with objects. Yes. So and the more. flying drone can only do things like b via hacking like wirelessly, mm -hmm. but the... Jumpy. The jumpy, the jumper, he can physically go up to boxes, hack them, physically go up to things, and, you know, he has a different sense of stealth because he is on the ground, although there were dogs and other animals. Uh, that's what I was going to bring up. That was my favorite part of Jumpy. He can shock dogs. That's very sad. <laughs> yes. Not did very good at all. Did you do it? I didn't. And, and, I just stealthed. Yeah, well, th there's a guard dog, and I'm not, I'm not, I don't go around just shocking dogs for fun, but there's a guard dog, and he was in my way, and he said, hey, you could just shock him. I'm like, what? He's like, yeah, just, you know, run up to him, press the button, mm -hmm. and you straight up shock him, the dog falls, and you're not in danger anymore. The whole animation system is far more fluid, so Marcus moves with ease, whether it's parkour, whether it's pulling on his laptop to use a drone, whether it's uh, hacking, it all look to move with a lot more fluidity and speed, and I think the cool part of this game is going to be really getting into some of those trickier battles, whether they're indoor or outdoor, and using a wide variety of your tools and tactics to just tear the place apart, whether, you, whether it's actually with guns, or whether it's with st stealth and hacking, or whether it's completely silent. They said you can't play the game without killing anyone. Yeah, you have the freedom. Uh, you, you Guns are like sort of a part but of the game, but you do have a stun gun. You do also have these drones that do these things for you, so you can not kill anyone if that's your thing. Yeah, the world looked a lot better. Graphically, it's far improved. Beautiful, beautiful. Colorful as all heck. Um, and the map is, is massive, so if you're worried that, oh, it's just going to take place in the downtown district, uh, they opened the map up for us and we got to see that there is Silicon Valley, there is the Bay Bridge area, Oakland's there is in it. Oakland, downtown Alcatraz, Every, yeah, like pretty much the entire Bay Area, Marin, all of, yeah. all of San Francisco is playable, they're all different districts and they all have a different look and feel, um, and I think that... It does, I mean, we'll have to see how the story plays out. We didn't get to play a story mission. No. We did see a story mission. Yes. And that looked pretty uh, good. We can't talk about the specifics of that. Right, but, but we can say that it looked pretty good and that there's some cool additions and features that, again, really make it feel like a, a unique thing. And I think the characters that Marcus interacts with have a much more... Their vibe fits in line with the vibe of the game, whereas Watch Dogs, I think, felt a little random. Like, yes. Like, sure, Clara was a cool character, and sure, uh, the first partner you met, the... Uh, I don't even... I, don't, I didn't play yeah, the original. Okay, well, anyways, there, there were some interesting characters, but it felt more generic and disjointed, whereas this feels like it's very much playing into the whole hacker vibe. I feel like I'm a part of Anonymous, Yeah. and I like the fact that as you complete missions, whether they're side or main, you gain followers, um, and followers allow you to access and open up more things. And so it sort of is like a really like 2016 type game where you're gaining followers, which gains popularity, which then gives you more access and opens up abilities. They're still upgrading, there's still resource points. Uh, and the side missions this time, they said they wanted to make sure that they felt much more true to Marcus and true to the game, as opposed to just being stupid little diversions. Yeah. So it seems like the side missions are going to be more mini main missions rather than just go, I'm sure there will still be collectibles, but rather than just like, oh, touch 20 towers or whatever. Yeah. Like there's gonna be a little bit more to it. Um, and with that hacking, potential, I feel like they can create and craft far more interesting side missions than they could before when it was a lot more, you know, just open world generic based. Alright, so the biggest takeaway, right, for me, this game has a soul where Watch Dogs didn't. Yeah. Like, Aiden Pierce to me, was a boring character. His motivations weren't, like, really fun. Like, it was more of a depressing game, really. Like, this game completely turned down on its head. Now this is fun. Now this is something that I really, really want to play, which... I had zero interest in this thing before. Yeah, I, I mean, they showed a lot of different things. We saw total customization of the character. Um, and just to touch on a few more things from co-op that I found interesting. So in your game, you're Marcus with your clothes and your attire. 
but like if you were jumping into my game, I would see you as a different character, yeah. but with your same clothes and attire. Yeah. And you can either randomize the character you are, or you can specify, oh, I want to be an old white guy with dreads, or I want to be a you know a young girl with you know whatever. And so you can you can pick how you look in their, the game. And one thing that was cool is that some of the the gadgets have co-op uses that are not used in single player. So it's not just oh a me to game experience. There is variety in the co-op missions. At least what they said was, was that they will in, encourage you to use those. So I don't know if you saw this, but I went in stealth uh, to the co-op mission, and I was flying my drone, mm -hmm. and my co-op partner uh, was able to put some shockers on the drone, and then I could use those to shock uh, enemies, as well as we could kind of both be marking with our drones at the same time, and it, it sort of felt like you and your brother were going out to complete this crazy mission together, and like, okay, we're going to hack things together and have two perspectives, two drones, and then also sort of those co-op moves where, okay, I could put something on the drone and who knows what the, you know, the full implications of that are once you level up the, the skill tree. My co-op mission turned into a complete mess. You know? um, I, he asked, you know, how do you want to do this? I said, well, let's try stealth only. Mm -hmm. That also, that turned on its head quickly. Okay. My, my drone got spotted. They that, shot it down with rocks. And then after that, we were out there. Yeah, I liked also, I don't know if you saw the drone since, since it went to hell, but uh, I was able to call in, I was able to hack uh, a gang member and call an arrival yeah, gang. Yeah, yeah, and the, then the cops show up too because there's right, two gangs shooting right. at each other, yeah. And so then I had to use like the drone to try and take out the other gang before you yeah. know things got too bad for my guy trying to get in. It, it just seems a lot more dynamic and again focused on creating havoc in the world to your advantage and to your glee and to your mission objective. I really like the whole dead sec interface. I like how it pops up on the top of the screen. It has almost a very pixel art, uh, just very... Creative, clever usage. There's great music. The soundtrack, yeah. you know, I'm not sure we can talk about it, but we like that a lot. And I think, for me, you know, the story is going to be a big, big part. If they can really nail a good story that not only has its own vibe, but has a memorable, you know, plot and a memorable villain and sort of a, a good follow through from beginning to end, I think this really could be another stellar sequel for Ubisoft in terms of their number twos. Be amazing, yeah. Always, yeah. And and I don't, you know, I, I think the gunplay seemed a little weak. I do worry about, you know, what what is the structure of the missions, but look, requests and demands from players, they've addressed almost all of them. Better driving, yeah. right? A better character, yeah. a better tone, more hacking, more options and variety, more of its own unique feel, a better, more, brighter, more colorful city, more diverse environments. Yeah. I mean, everything that you you wanted better in Watch Dogs 2 is better, and the foundation that made Watch Dogs 1 interesting and initially really hyped is there. So like to me, I came out of that being like I can't wait for November. I want to play the game, and I think all signs point to it being, like, a really good game. And Ubisoft must believe it as well, because they have Assassin's Creed sitting out. Watch Dogs 2 takes the helm. Um, we found out now that Ghost Recon is not coming in 2016. Yeah. And therefore, Watch Dogs is their big, their big tentpole yeah. pinnacle game and release, and I think it's going to live up to the hype. So... Let us know in the comments what you think of the new footage and gameplay you've seen. If you have any questions about Watch Dogs 2, what you're feeling about the game, uh, go check out Gabe's channel for more E3 coverage. I'll, of course, have lots of stuff here. And, uh, I mean, I gave that demo a solid, like, 8.5 out of 10. Mr. Robot, a show that you do not watch, they seem to really get some inspiration from there. If they can do what Mr. Robot did with the story, because it's, it's very similar, so hacking society type thing. Okay. Like, that's how the show is. If they could do that and pull that off in the game, I'll be freaking happy. Yeah, and I, I really... The character does not come off as like overly edgy or overly yeah. hip hop or overly hipster. He seemed to strike a balance where he will have appeal to everyone, which, you know, I appreciate. He's hip hop though, so I like it. Yeah. Anyways, guys and girls, thanks so much for watching. That's Watch Dogs 2, our impressions. Can't wait for the game. We'll be following it more and hopefully playing and recording some in the future. Until that time, though, drink so much, y'all. Thanks again. Check out all the other E3 coverage. Until next time, we will see you all later.